Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 what's going on? I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. And when I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, TikTok, you name it. We're on it. Just Google Boss Talk Podcast 101 and it will pop up. But if you want to see our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. There you can subscribe. But y'all always see us on the street and be like, how can we, you know, support the brand? How we love what y'all do and keep pushing. This is how you can support the brand. Become a member. How you can become a member is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section below. Go ahead and see a link that says join membership. Click that link. Takes you through all the process because we're going to keep pushing this content every single day. And we thank you for your support. Man, hey, man. Listen, man. Hey, I'm excited, man. I got a guy in here now. Listen, it's family in here now. See, it's a difference when family come in. I mean, we fit to talk about a lot of stuff, stuff that y'all probably wouldn't normally hear on the podcast. We about to tell it all. It's a tell all right now, man. We put to put you up on business and everything else, man. My boy, radio is in the building. Yes, sir. One more yes, game. Yes, hey, this one, one, one. Hey, one. Well, there it is. There. See, he, he real, speak real that. He speak, he speak. You know, don't you know? You didn't even know. You been over there you know hey, you be everywhere i be everywhere you know i touch a little here a little here thank you for coming back on the show man i know Appreciate i called you a few times and we were just scheduled out and yeah, going yeah. our places we, man we've been missing we where been the missing hell you been man i ain't gonna lie i've been i've been in my a you know what i'm saying <laughs> i've definitely been in my a but i'm back you know what i'm saying it, it, it means something to be back the second time so wow that man. means you're doing something man I, I thank god for you man i know Appreciate already man the way me and you rock it wouldn't be right if I did this show and being in Dallas, me and you both located here and mm -hmm. us not sit down, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. much as I've seen you hustle over the years, man, going here, going there, trying to keep these brands going mm -hmm. and, and putting people in position, you know what I mean? Just Most helping time. our culture, man. So I want to thank you first and foremost for that, bro. You know what I'm nah, saying? Because a lot of people talk it and a lot of people want to look good for the gram, mm -hmm. but a lot of times it's not happening. Now you're not lying about that. So mm -hmm. I thank you. Thank you for really being uh, you know, an uh, entrepreneur and really putting that putting that stump down down. So we want to get into some particulars today, <laughs> right, babe? We feel to get into like, what do you do? Oh, why do man. you do it? Oh, How man. did you come up with this? Like, <laughs> and and why do you keep trying to do this this way? Why you okay? Let's talk about the location. Yeah. You over in that location uh, at first? Uh, are they still doing the hub and everything over there? Or they, is it is it oh. just? Kind of took a break for it. You okay. Know? Like I said, um, I'm actually looking to move into a new location. Wow. So so uh, is any remodeling going on? Last time I came over there, it was dope. You took me all through there, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I actually enjoyed it. I hadn't been over there when we did the first recording. Yeah. But then I came over there right after that. Everything. And I got to see it. And I loved it, bro. The way you had it laid out, mm -hmm. the way it is laid out, because you're still there currently today. Yep. Still there. Like, 15 years. 15 years. Like I've been here 18, 18 years. Yep, see, yep. they don't understand. See, come on. Like when you really 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 been putting it down you you it's a history there bro mm -hmm. you know so 15 years you've been over at that same location same location haven't changed 15 years probably one of the longest studios in dallas wow that's so live bro and 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 standing like so i seen the room where you could take the you could do the visuals you could do the mm -hmm. green screen you could do a lot in this in the room where where they were sitting that's on the stage doing the hub yeah okay um then you had the office, you got the offices laid out. Like, yeah. explain to me what went into designing that like that. And why, why did you do it that way? I'm not going to lie. It actually came to me in a dream. Wow. You know, and I was actually just thinking about what I wanted to do next. And the dream came to me and it was like, why don't you just build it all in one place and put everything together? And I was like, man, that's going to take a lot. And I was like, it's going to cost a lot. But then I was thinking about it, I was like, but the opportunities and the people that's going to come in is going to really open doors for Dallas, open doors for all these other entrepreneurs. So I felt like it was real important for me to build it and look at 15, look at years, 15 later. years later. Yeah. I love it, man. Just even just with the way that it sits out alone by itself. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, the way that location matters, but just to have that, it, it's it's pretty much isolated. And I'm you know not what I mean? Lie, that location is probably the toughest location to be in just because you get hassled by the police. Wow, like, I didn't I know that. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, Is that kind of like Addison Carrollton? 
It's Carrollton. Carrollton. Okay. And, uh, but isn't it a little duck off? So it's like. It's a little bit like right off the highway. Right. But it's in the warehouse area. Okay. So it, it takes a lot to get there. But when you're there, you're going to see that it's kind of like it just right. opens up the, the way you want it to. Yeah. But, so why are um, you getting harassed, though? Um, I mean, I feel like the cops over there already got something bad against studios. Mm. And, uh, you know, rest in peace to my guy, uh, Big D. You know, he had Damn. a studio on the other side. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I remember the feds actually raided his studio. Really? Wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then yeah. they were actually about to raid my studio because they found out that I had a studio over there. And, like, right before they were about to raid my studio, I went ahead and just invited the cops over to the studio so they can see for themselves. Wow. Mm, and I walked them smart. in and I let them search through everything, look through everything. And then they actually started tripping out when I told them what we was doing in the studio. I yeah. was like, you ever seen the show Tiger King? They were like, yeah, that's one of my favorite shows. <laughs> I was like, that was filmed here. I was and they the didn't producers. even know it. And they never knew it. And they were like, you telling me Tiger King was here? I was wow. like, yeah, he recorded in that studio. He wow. sat in that chair. And it was like, can I take a picture of the chair? <laughs> and these are cops. They yeah. were like, I can't believe it. You know what I'm saying? And then that after that, crazy. they never messed with me ever again. Wow, That's let's talk about Tiger And they King. pulled me over like <laughs> they know five you. times. They knew me so much to where even like during COVID, when they were pulling me over and they had the mask, I knew which cop it was. I'm was he break, was he get harassing you, kind of? He was. So like like, and you knew which one it was. To, he I was said, trying. Officer Willis. And Can't he, you complain about that to the department though? I mean, I could have, but I was like, you know, there got to be a way for us to meet mutually. Mm -hmm. Come on, you now. know, and actually come to an understanding because if I complain and I keep making it harassment on them and they keep harassing me, then it just never it stops. never stops. But if I just invite them over and actually treat them like how they want to be treated, then it stopped. That's smart. That's yeah. smart. And then when he pulled me over the last time, he was like, uh, he was like, oh, is you again? He was like, you already know. I'm just going to let you go. Wow. So now he knows every time he pulls me over. And he knows you, you're, yeah. just a, you're just an entrepreneur, man. And it's hard because of the perception that's out there a lot of times about studios, of course. Mm -hmm. But that Tiger. I mean, studios are like one of the dangerous places you could be. That's at. right. That's right. You, you got to have your camera set up so you can see who's coming up mm -hmm. on it and all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Tiger is Tiger King. Like what, what, what was it that what, how did you even get involved in that? Um, I actually got involved through a, another producer, uh, you know, JT Barnett, good friend of mine. We've been friends for a long, long time. And, you know, he's always, like, jumped on things that I was always kind of questioning, like, you know, are you sure you want to do this? And he was like, yeah, I'm telling you, this is going to be good. This is going to be gold. This is going to be one of the biggest things ever. Wow. And I was like, a gay zookeeper with tigers, and this is going to be big. He was like, I promise you, it's going to be big. And then next, you know, I'm up at the zoo and I see all his husbands at the zoo and I see all the stuff that's going on. And then it kind of clicked to me. I was like, yeah, you're right. This could be big. Wow. And so we was actually shooting for another network. And then next, you know, the lady got her arm chopped off. I remember that part. That's what that that was the thing that kind of made things difficult. Right. Yeah. Yep. And then once the lady got her arm chopped off, that's when the network shut us down. Wow. And you basically. Did you lose money during that? That I mean, we spent a lot of time, and I had all, like, my guys up there, and I sent all my equipment up there, and we were shooting different stuff, and we had a whole bunch of footage that we collected from there. But then once that happened and they, like, pretty much said that the footage is useless, we just started writing over the hard drives. So uh -huh. we just started using, the, like, the hard drive. Damn. But then all of a sudden Netflix hit us up and was like, hey, you had that same footage that y'all had before? And we was like, yeah, but we was almost getting rid of it. And they were like, we'll pay you a per minute that we use for that footage. Wow. wow. So you so you end up, did you so you, did you recoup off of it? I mean, it, it was good. It was nice? It was nice. It was nice. You know, we, 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 we worked it out. You know what I'm saying? Everything yeah. worked out nicely. How much footage did you have left, though? Did you race a lot of it? I mean, a lot of it was a race. You know, yeah. but luckily some of the, the best footage wasn't a race. Mm -hmm. That's the good part, yeah, man. That's so, the good part. Like the footage of the lady getting her arm chopped off, that was our footage. Uh, the footage of, you know, him getting chased by the tiger in the cage and getting his leg 
Klimt and all the footage of his music videos. We shot the videos. So wow. in my studio, so we recorded a lot. Man, I, like I said, I just know last time when you was on, I didn't get to talk about that much. I'm yeah. like, I got to get him back over here because my brother was on my butt about it. Yeah. Yeah, he, <laughs> that's just dope that you, you know, that that you able to deal with people and communicate on a level to where you can bring people together to, you know, deal with sure. projects and stuff. I mean, that's a, that's a gift, man. Where do you think you get that from? Uh, I mean, I feel like for me, I was I grew up very diverse, you know, being Japanese and being black and being born in Japan and then coming to America. And then when I came to America, I lived in all these different places and was able to kind of like see different cultures kind of work together, you know, because the Asian culture working with the black culture and just seeing how everybody kind of coexists. I was like, well, why don't we do this on a bigger level? On a business level, you yeah, know, yeah. because it doesn't have to be so segregated to where it's like, okay, the Mexicans work with the Mexicans, the Asians work with the Asians. It's better when we all work together. That's it. That's you know? it. It's it's so much better when we all work together. And mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that 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 brings. Even when you look at the music, being a student, you you know, you you definitely own a studio, but just the the, the musicians. When you seen four bats come up like that, mm -hmm. wasn't that? Like, did you, nobody, see, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where he come from. Yeah. It's yeah. like, he just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Have, have you seen anybody go up like that? I mean, Big X the plug. Did he go up like that? He started at your studio. You, you seen yeah. him. Yeah. He, he, he uh, told that on this show yeah, that he started at your studio. Yeah. Like, but this guy just, did he even have a studio? Had you ever heard of him before? I mean, Because you in the studios all the time. I mean, he, he really did the Post Malone formula. Okay. Because Post Malone had the same exact formula. When you first heard of Post Malone, you only heard one song. And when you started to look him up, you only found White Iverson. And you didn't know that he was from Grapevine. No, you didn't. You know, you didn't know that he was from Dallas when you heard that song. But everybody started to check for it. You know, when they kept looking it up, they couldn't find nothing because it was only one song that kept pulling up. Even though he's done tons of work before that, but I guess whatever system they had him on, they were able to just focus on that one song and wipe everything else off. Wow, which is dope. Which is dope. So Four Bats did the same formula. Wow. Where and when you looked them up, you only could find one song. So now his numbers are going out the roof. Everybody's looking them up. They're trying to see if he got any other content out there. You can't find nothing else. But then he drops another song that's similar, but is even bigger and better. And then Post Malone did the same thing. Wow. You know, and then after that, that's when got the big deal. Once the big deal happens, next you know you got features with Drake. Next you know you got features with all the biggest artists. So pretty wow. much gone from there. You have artists, right? Lardy, Lardy still your artist? Lardy still my artist. That's hard. Like, yeah, like, yeah. and uh, what's the name was hanging out over there too? Which was, what's his name? Which one? The guy, the one that came on here to keep on. He's he's still be in the comments on in his in his video. Who Eclipse? Eclipse. Okay. Yeah, Eclipse. Yeah. He be over yeah, there with y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he recorded in your studio, oh, right? Yeah. Nah, he's a solid brother, man. Definitely one of the people that wants to bring people together. So that's yeah. hard. That's yeah. hard. So like like how do you pick and choose like an artist? Like what what makes you say I want to work with this person and and I don't mind you know signing into a deal with them. I think a lot of people struggle with that. What I've learned is is when you find an artist that has the same hustle as you, man, which is which is big, you know, because a lot of artists don't have that same hustle. You know, they have that mentality like, you know, what you going to do for me? Or they have the mentality like, oh, well, I'm the artist. You supposed to do everything else. Mm -hmm. But then you got some artists that say, "Hey, I don't care if I'm the artist. I'll pick up my own bags. I'll book my own shows. Come on now. I'll drive my own car, you know what I'm saying? I'll pay my own rent. I'll do whatever it takes to get to where I need to be because that's what they thrive. That's what they strive for, you know? But some artists, they don't have that same mentality. They feel like, well, I'm the talent. All that stuff is supposed to be given to me. Wow. Because they watch other artists or they watch other stories and they think those stories fit to their story, but it doesn't work like that. Wow. But that's one thing I see about her. She's extra dope. Mm -hmm. uh, Lordy on like TikTok and just mm -hmm. the, just working, putting that extra effort out there mm -hmm. is, is so important. You know, and when we had on here, 
dope story, dope set. I mean, just the thing we found out about her, you know, just the thing you got to understand, man, is when you're dealing with all of these different people, man, like, like you got to realize, like, in the South, man, independence is cool, right? Oh, yeah. And and being independent, you're putting up your own money. Mm-hmm. And people don't understand. It comes back. But one thing, Kiki was on the show, and he said, you know, basically, uh, he had heard Snoop talking about the, the, the um, had heard Snoop talking about the streaming, mo- mm-hmm. you know, money and how it wasn't that good. But he had a different take on it. He was like, but they, they pretty much, they... We didn't know how to make the cassette tapes. We didn't know how to make the CDs. We just gave them, and they told us how much we was getting off of it. And and and, but he's he really breaking it down to a science that you still can put music out, and you still can go out and promote, and you still can sell product, and you still can you know what I mean do these things and be successful. But you can't look at it just on the streaming dollar. So I felt him on that. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I mean, I felt like there's a lane for everything. You know, and I feel like it's so open and it's so diverse right now to where it's like if you just want to go stream, you can go stream. If you want to go and be underground, you could be underground. If you just want to create your own cult following, you can create your own cult following and pretty much sell merch, you know, like uh, Tech Nine. Tech Nine is one of the biggest independent merch selling machines I've ever seen. Yeah. Besides him and... um, the uh, ICP. Yeah, yeah. So ICP, they have a cult following, you know, not to use the word cult. No, I, I, he definitely got a cult following. They was coming over here trying to buy uh, Tech 9 stuff, and I, hell, I didn't know where to get it. He <laughs> he got it pretty much to hell his. Just to yeah. him. Just for his people, mm-hmm. and they was over here, You do you get Tech 9 stuff? I'm like, hell no, nah, I don't even know. Uh, yeah, his picture on the wall with yeah. me over there, but yeah. hell, it's, over, it's on that other side, but... I don't know where you get putting that stuff at, you know. <laughs> but I'm telling you, those, those guys are geniuses on how they did it and how they really capitalized on that market. Yeah. And they don't ever be on the radio. You don't ever hear them on the radio. You never hear them on the radio. So mm-hmm. what, when you first seen Big X the Plug, he was one of the dopest artists out of Dallas right now, the hottest artist out of mm-hmm. Dallas. Mm-hmm. He starts off at your studio. Can you remember when he first came to the studio? I remember... Um, Actually, his cousin took him by the studio. Okay. And uh, his name is Big. His name is Al, and Al brought him by the studio. And when he came there, I knew he was going to be big. I was you like, did. Yeah, I knew. Everything about him was like, okay, he got all the right formula. He got the hustle. He got the look. He got the sound. He got everything that he needs to be big. And when he won my artist showcase, because I do like a once a year artist showcase, then I knew. Even then, he was going to even be bigger. Wow. Because I was like, most of the time, the people that win my artist showcase are just very talented people because people love talent. You know what I'm saying? They never just focus on rap because there was a lot of rappers that tried, but they never really won. But he had such a unique style, a unique look, and just the way he presented himself was just crazy. Wow. And and like I said, I from you... Half Pint, uh, just all the people that come on and talk about Big X, you know, Mm -hmm. um, just the stories you hear about when they first start off, you know, and then from him being on this show, like, the thing is, he's just, like, like he grew fast. He grew yeah. fast. You know, him, Mexican OT, yeah. that Mexican OT, I deal with uh, B. Dunn. Shout out to B. Dunn. Yeah. You know, I before he even ho- was hot, yeah. I was down there in the studio, in, in their studio. Yeah. I recorded a, uh, a AD down there from California. We met down at the studio in Houston, mm-hmm. and I was there with them, and me and G, G. Luck and B. Dunn. And they were like, man, Mexican OT, man, he going to, he, he, you got, I want you to interview him, man. He gonna be good, yeah. you know. He hadn't even hit yet, yeah. and then all of a sudden you just see, boom, yeah. he takes off. Yeah, and and it's like I just talked to G Luck the other day when I was in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was just like, man, we gotta get, we gotta get him on that, but we gotta go through the label now. E, that's the only way we move it. I know. And I was I like, man, it's cool. I said, I ain't tripping. I just love to see y'all because there ain't a time that I call and they don't pick that phone up. I yeah. can say that they respect me a lot. You yeah. know what I mean? So. I'm not looking. I'm really just checking on you, nigga. Yeah. What you doing? Yeah. How y'all doing? You know, a lot of people don't get those calls. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's all I be about, man. And one, Who, one thing about you, you, you're genuine what you say and what you do. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. worry about the hype. You don't worry about the fame. No. You, you, you 
I'm going to keep you down to keep it 100 in every single way. You know I'm going to keep saying? you down there. You, you ain't going to be doing all that with me anyway because yeah. I'm going to say something throwed, you know? Yeah. Nah, but it's like out that. of love, though. Like you know that. what I mean? It ain't, it ain't, it's just who I am, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't be at the house. I, I get a little quiet at the house, though. Sometimes. 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 If I get on that phone, though, it get bad, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, tell me, man, like, like radio, like, What's the next move? You've been moving around. You've been you've been going to Miami a lot. Yeah. You've been you've been traveling a lot. What's going on with the uh, with the wave of entrepreneurship, property investments? What are you doing? Uh, I mean, I started the trucking business with okay. my little brother, so uh, that's been going and uh, it's been going pretty well. He's he's getting it together. Wow. You know, he uh, got out of prison, and you know, when he got Man. out of prison, the first thing I told him, I was like, you know, you got to get yourself back right. Yeah. You know, but you got to learn skill you got to learn a business so the first thing i said you need to work for a trunk of company learn everything mm -hmm. you can and then when you get to a good place i'll buy you your first truck wow and and i think how that's long dope. did that take him uh it took him a couple of years you know mm -hmm. because i really wanted him to really learn and really like figure out the ins and outs because a lot of times when you're just the driver you know you just focus on the pay you're not focused on the behind the scenes, but he was able to see both sides to where he was booking his loads. He was learning how to talk to the dispatchers and getting all his brokers together. So, you know, he did that. That's good. So and he I, knew he knew you and him was going to do that. So he went in with a mindset yeah. to, to, to capitalize on learning and building and building relationships. How did you guys how did you guys know? how to get that work like once everything because once you condition to work for someone yeah. to come out of that situation and now you know go to where hey i'm gonna go and pull you know loads for this or that how did you guys figure that well, out well i always told them when you work for these people take every information you can take everybody's numbers take everything you can yeah because all that stuff is free you know, that doesn't go against the policy. You know, if you got this person's number, if you met this person, you know, that's only the smart thing to do. A lot of people, they go do these jobs and don't ever mm -hmm. contact that person mm -hmm. again when this person is going to help you make your next million or mm -hmm. this person can help you build your business, you know. And wow. that's what he did. A lot of people that he kept in contact with him are the people that helped us find our lawyer to you know, get all our stuff legalized and find our insurance company. So all the people that he connected with are the people that we're working with now. That's love good it. that I love he it. had I that love per, um, personality where he could do that because some people, I met people who are big mm -hmm. and they just say that they just go to whatever they got to do and leave. They don't, they're not trying no. to talk to nobody and not trying to get nobody's number. No. I'm like, for what? If you're in certain rooms that are higher than your level, yep. why not get that connection? Oh yeah, They just don't have that personality for it. And I feel like everybody got to do that. You know, it don't matter where you're at. You could be at a gas station. If you see someone doing a little bit better than you, hey, hey, mm -hmm. what do you do? Oh, okay. Hey, how, how can I get into that? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Can I get your number or an email or something? Mm -hmm. You know, can can we stay in contact? That's a part of the hustle. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a part of it, right yeah. there. I mean, that's I, I I've been that kind of way. That's kind of who I am. Yeah. Like I'm I at the gas station. Met. Yeah, I'm talking to I everybody. Think we met the same way I where we just blame. kept running into yeah. each other. If I like, see you, I'm talking <laughs> to you first of all. Yeah. With, before the podcast, you, yeah. if you see me, I'm he stopping. I'm everybody. chopping it up with you. Yeah. That will be for this. Yeah. To be honest with you, so yeah. that just that that's this why came they work perfect. Exactly. <laughs> so I always talk to everybody. I always stop. I'm I'm, I'm never too busy. Yeah. I'm always trying to say, hey man, what you doing? What you yeah. got going? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. You know, I'm just messing with you. But at the end of the day, I think it makes sense because communication is key. You know what I yeah. mean? So when you look at just like, OK, the way that the Internet is now, mm -hmm. the way the music used to be, mm -hmm. what is how do you bridge these gaps? Man, how do you figure out a way to make somebody successful in this climate? How do you push those projects out now? Independently rolling them out. Are you just putting out EPs? Are you trying to do 15 song albums? You know, what are we doing to try to pr put that pressure on, on the people to listen to this music? Mm -hmm. It does the radio matter anymore. How I, I, There's a lot going yeah. on right here with the questions yeah. I'm asking yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every one of those things matters, but it matters to the market. So it depends on which market you're marketing to. You know, if you want to market to the masses, then, of course, you need the radio behind you. But if you want to market to, you know, let's say just TikTok, you know, all you need is just viral content. If you want to market 
to Spotify users, then all you need is just keep dropping consistency music that sounds the same to where enough listeners are going to start following your content. Wow. And, and and that's so true. You know, it's so many ways you could do it now is what, what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's so many avenues you could take. You know what I'm saying? This music thing is not one dimensional. It used to be one dimensional. It was a, it was a big shot. Like, if I get in, I'm going to make it. I'm going to sign this 360 deal. Yeah. I'm headed to the top. Yeah. Now, now there's so many different ways it could happen anyway. What what advice that I think most artists should do is most artists should really consult with someone that's been in the game okay. and sit down and talk to them and say, hey, listen to what I've been doing and tell me what I should be doing or what I could be doing. And then take pointers from what they tell you and get as much consulting as you can because there's a lot of things that you don't know about marketing. Mm. You know, because you see yourself as like, oh, well, I can market to anybody. Anybody's going to listen to the music. But someone that's been in the game and understands music can actually tell you, say, hey, you're going in the wrong direction or you're going in the right direction. And this is some of the things that you can do to kind of help make that direction really solidified. You know, Mm. because marketing is everything. Same thing like this show. This show markets to a particular crowd. That's right. And that crowd are people that actually love entrepreneurship. That's right. That's right. You know, so. They love it. You have a tow truck driver that just pulled up. (laughs) (laughs) And obviously he owns his own tow truck. Yeah, yeah, he's right. he's he's listening to this show because he wants to pick up that game that's coming from this show. That's it. Because other bosses are giving good game on him. That's the whole game, man. And that's that's why it's called Boss Talk 101. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, everybody can win. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Absolutely. I I just really like, like, like when I think about just, you know, What's going on today in media? You see so many things from Shannon Sharp, mm-hmm. Club Shay Shay, which is killing it right now. Yeah. You know, every time you turn the damn YouTube on, you got a million and some views. I'm looking yeah. like, oh, that boy, they're going to get yeah. to it. But yeah. the one thing I can not say, man, you know, is what do you think podcasting do, you know, for us? And that's the question I got. Like, what do you think it does for our people? What does it do? What, what does all this communication do? I feel like it gives insight on conversations that happens behind closed doors but now you can actually see it on a major scale wow. because a lot of times like when you're in a setting like this it feels like you with family that no it, that's real it, it doesn't feel like you're on a show it doesn't feel mm-hmm. like you're talking to a stranger it feels like i'm talking with family that's real So when you get comfortable talking with family you're gonna say the most craziest <laughs> wildest <laughs> shit is that what happened to cat williams that's when he exactly got over there what happened <laughs> And the first thing you offer is some Sorry drink. Because drink. <laughs> you want that exclusive that's shit. It, that's it. That's it. That's the formula. But, but the way how he came out with it, some people was like, no, he came with it in his mind that he going to say this, 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 no matter what you ask him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he's going to be a genius on what he does. But also, too, I mean, what he did for Sharp. Mm. Made him more money than he's ever made in the NFL. 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 That's right. Which is crazy. It's just crazy. crazy. One One interview. That tells you the power of what we do. You see what I'm saying? Anything can change in in the click of a button. You know, and that's the whole crazy game, man. I want to ask you about something else as well. Like P Diddy going through what he going through. I'm gonna be real with you. Like when you <laughs> you gotta answer this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean it up. Yeah. When I say P Diddy, nigga get scared. No, oh, hold up, nigga. Shit. Hold up, nigga. Now <laughs> I'm asking you, like with you being a a, a boss, a, yeah. a, a a business, a, a entrepreneur, with people around you all the time. How do you how do you stir the issues of? people looking at you and drawing the wrong perception of who you is as a man, your character. I mean, I told you I, I was going to clean it up. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I honestly feel like you're going to get every type of hate you can think of, you know, and truth. I was just thinking about this today. I was like, what type of hate do you get in Dallas? Wow. You know, and it's the hate to where when someone mentions somebody, they'll say something hateful behind it. They be like, oh, you talking about old girl with herpes? Mm-hmm. Oh, you didn't know she had herpes? Oh, my bad. Oh, you talking about old dude that got locked up with the drugs? Oh, you didn't know he was, oh yeah, my bad. And it's like, they want to follow up with something negative. I've never heard like, even though I might know some dirt, let's just say something positive. 
You know what I'm saying? But I feel like that's just what we was trained to do since middle school, high school. Is like we want to introduce something that's going to make someone say something afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's really the crab in the barrel mentality when you think about Man, it. Man, I, I try to practice... Like, if you say, like, a lot of people ask me about real life, they'll be like, man, what you think about real life? Or, or, or I seen that on real life, and I'd mm -hmm. be like, they dope. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't know them like that, yeah. but they dope to yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? We all dope. But Sean Cotton, shout out to Sean Cotton. He coming through next week. Mm -hmm. I see you then. But yeah. the thing is, like, one of the biggest, yeah. you know, have made a career out of this. You know, you got to respect him the way he came through. Yeah, and there's you, only a few people that would actually follow up with something positive. Correct. You know, Correct. because a lot of conversations out here in Dallas is always it's be, negative. It be negative. But that's why I don't really just, you you won't see me out too much. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, niggas be inviting me there, I be like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. You know, because I just, me and my wife, man, we just, you see this crew, yeah. you're looking at it. Yeah. So it really ain't something that we try, we do this from the heart. So we don't, it don't matter what you say. I want the people who I do rock with, though, mm -hmm. that's who I rock with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, we too old for that. You know what I'm saying? So I always try to show the the, the fact of unity with marriage for over mm -hmm. 20 some years, you know, mm -hmm. with I just try to show things to our people yeah. that can help our people yeah. to see that we can make it through to see another day mm -hmm. and be and, and be structured with it. Yeah. That's all you say. You've been over there for 15 years. Yeah. You had your business over there. Huge, huge facility. Yeah. Nice facility. Yeah. I've been here for 18 years. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We've had five different stores here in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Entrepreneurship is real. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's a thing where now if you got this, you could do a lot of different things, man. It's mm -hmm. at your fingertips. Yeah. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to educate our people on the fact that they can do something. And, then, and I don't have to never meet you. Yeah. I can do it right right now, just like I'm doing this. Yeah, and and right. I think that's important. And I think that's why we do this. You know what I mean? But I also feel like there's a, a different dynamic that's missing. Okay. You know, because Houston got it. I rock with Houston. One thing I've been studying about Houston <laughs> is, it's like their conversations don't follow up with something negative. No. You know, their conversations follow up with, oh, that's a boss. I respect that boss. Oh, that's another boss. I respect that boss. Or a female that used to be a stripper, she's a boss. I respect that boss. You know what I'm saying? And it's a lot of respect to the point to where when they put each other on and they put each other together, it's like they're all celebrating each other's accomplishments yeah. instead of each other's failures. But how do we how do we get that that type of culture here in the Dallas market? I feel like we got to change the narrative. You know, we got to change the perspective because when we learn to celebrate each other's accomplishments and really understand what accomplishments are, then it's like we have a lot more to say about a person instead of focusing on their failures. Yeah. Because their failures is what we feel like is getting famous in Dallas. Like all the people that is doing something in a, in a negative light, we're just focusing on their failures. Yeah. You know, like P. Diddy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we're focusing on his failures. Yeah. But what about all his accomplishments? It's easy to focus on something bad because it's more entertaining. His accomplishments are not entertaining. What's entertaining is when they say P. Diddy and Meek Mills was together. It, it may not be true. Yeah. But it sounds crazy. Yeah. And the tonality and the way that it hits the internet and the way that it goes up yeah. makes people watch and it's engaging. And as yeah. soon as they see it, they be like tuned in. It's gossip. You know what I'm, saying? I'm just That's being real. That's what they do. And you got to understand, it ain't going to change. Yeah. So now you got to figure out a way to make positive things look entertaining and make it go up. Okay. How do you do it? That's the that's where it's, that's where the change comes in. So when, almost when, like you got to trick people. It like like you giving them some gossip, but it's really like a reverse. You trying to educate them, sort of. Okay, so good example. You got Travis Scott, right? Mm -hmm. Shout out, Travis so Scott. Travis Scott went through one of the most difficult things you can go through. Yeah, in mm -hmm. career. I remember that. You know where he tried to do something great in his city, put on one of the biggest shows you can possibly think of. And then people died. Right. Yeah. You know, and they feel like they died because of because him. Because of him. You know, when they really just died because of lack of security. 
you know, and whoever organized the event. But did that stop him? No. Did that stop him from doing stuff in this city? I just saw his charity baseball game. Mm-hmm. And he had all the legends in the building for that. And he just kept bringing people back together and bringing people back together and keep shining more light to the city to where eventually people be like, well, hey, that might have happened, but we still back him because what he's doing for the city. And then if you got the mayor behind you, you got the all the politicians behind you, then the city gets behind you even more. And that's one thing that I'm seeing in Houston that we don't see in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Wow. What politicians get behind any rappers back here? None. None. Because all the politicians only care about the money. Mm-hmm. But over there, they actually care about the city. They yeah. want to unite the city. They want to bring the city together, which allows entrepreneurs to shine, which allows rappers to shine, allows everybody to shine. You would think that they would be trying to jump and do something right now since it's election time. Yeah, but they're not. But they're not. They're not. Because they feel like our vote don't matter. But wow. the entrepreneurs and all the different people in Houston votes do matter. Mm-hmm. So they're going to do more in Houston than they are doing here. Wow. Mm-hmm. Because how many of us is really voting? How many of us even know what governor is running, which mayor is running? We don't even know what's happening. No. All we know is the back end of the information. Yeah. You know what I was thinking about um, the other day? Because when you mentioned P. Diddy and stuff like that. And for some reason, you know, it didn't dawn on me before. But I just started thinking about it. I'm like, imagine what his daughters might be going through. And his all, sons. And yeah. his sons. With all, I think of his daughters more because they're younger. They're the younger ones, right? Yeah. And, you know, and we're in a society where I'm not, bullying is not accepted, but it's very rampant. Yeah. You know, you don't ever know what people are going on their social media and DMing them and saying all, all sorts of crazy oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're harassing. They're harassing them. And, you know, and they're still kids. They're teenagers. And, and it's That's like, traumatic. When, when people don't realize, like, when you look at the time P. Diddy was doing his thing and the time Bill Cosby was doing his thing, the time R. Kelly was doing his thing, that's the time when everything was behind closed doors. Mm. And, yeah, it might have been some foul stuff going on and it might have been some, you know, really negative things happening back there. But also at the time, that was a wild time. That was a, you that, had the crack epidemic going on. You had every drug you could be thinking of going on, passing around. Yeah. It was a way worse than what it is now. Yeah. But at least those drugs wasn't killing as many people as it is now. Exactly. That's right. You know, these drugs that's going on now is killing, killing everybody. Yeah. Back then, I seen crackheads live to 100 years old. They still, they still, still buy do crack. Right today. Yeah. Right today, they I didn't die. I don't see a crackhead die. Mm-mm. Wow. Mm-mm. You know what I'm not, saying? Not but, like that. But I seen people someone didn't sell die off crack? one pill. Not like, no. People don't sell bad no, crack. No, all the crack was good. All the crack was good. It was good crack. <laughs> Everything <laughs> you get. Crack. It, was, it, it, even, it Even if it was all base and had a little too much oil in it, it was still good yeah. for the smoker. He didn't get the comeback. <laughs> well, I don't want to go that way. See, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's you a different know, boss talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to go there with you, That's but yeah, yeah. Boss it was a time when, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. You still, you got, I'm going to just be quiet, but yeah. straight drop was the way. Hard right. yellow. But no, P. Diddy, you know, like I said, man, I I feel for his daughters Mm -hmm. and I feel for uh, his sons and I feel for what they're going through. Um, You know, the way the media is taking him down, Mm -hmm. same way they did Bill Cosby. And I feel for the victim if there were victims, because we don't know all this stuff is alleged. You know, these people are coming back from years ago. Why are they just now coming out, though? It's always when like one that. person gets a check. Now everybody comes out. But before then, there was nobody getting the check. So why they didn't come out then? That they really felt victimized then. Well, they know. But they they should have been filing a case a long they time ago. They know it's a but, chance they can get some money. But so not they even only that. come out for a check. But not even that. To me, I, I guess things might hit later on. But when Cassie did what she did and came out and she won... It died down for at least a couple months first before you nah, saw the next she, case she pop up. Open the floodgate. No, I'm talking the next person that came up. It didn't come up like right when she came out, mm, right? Wasn't there? Nah, it was a die there, down. There was a bunch of people coming out. Exactly the same big, time. I'm a big P Diddy fan. Okay, yeah. I still believe in everything he's done. 
Like, I've learned a lot of my ways through him. Mm -hmm. And I studied him, how he works with the artists, how he works with the labels, how he works with branding, how he works with his marketing. And I actually got to actually work with him and, like, stay at his house and work on his album and just be around him and be around Cassie and seeing how everything is. And it was a beautiful thing. Wow, wow. Yeah, and then, like, just the, the things I was studying was P. Diddy has, like, 10 assistants mm. and all these assistants cater to different parts of his business wow so when you saw all of this pop up you was just like in wow and i was like i knew he had a big party side because i think anybody that came from that era did you go to any of them parties no nah, not like yeah. that. <laughs> he, <laughs> he said, not that. Ass, he said yeah, not I, would, like I that. would stick you right on up in there. You, <laughs> <laughs> you know, these parties are serious. See, now you guilty for going to <laughs> a party? <man. laughs> guilty by association? Well, it's horrible, man. Because, and I don't mean to cut y'all, but damn, you know. Meek Mills was at a few of those parties, man. They wore the same shirt and all kind of stuff. And now they're pulling this stuff up. They got all kind of video footage. It's bad. It's really, really bad the way the internet make it look, you know? Yeah. It's horrible. So at the but end the of the day... the internet will always win. Yeah, You can't beat the internet. Meek Mills and academics have had a... Flow, they got a full-blown beef going behind this P. Diddy stuff. Yeah. They are really at each other's throat, threatening each other. All kind of internet stuff is going on with it. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. But when has it, academics I'll, ever been outside of his room? I don't think he's been outside. <laughs> I've never seen him outside of his room. <laughs> I don't, I've never seen I him either. I think he stays at his mama house <laughs> in the basement and he do the shooting videos. all his videos. <laughs> and he never go outside his room. <laughs> he door dash all his groceries. He kicking it, ain't he? He don't know. And out. making money, just sitting in that house. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, but I'm telling at you, least man. Charles the White is outside. Yeah, at least, right? I, I ain't seen that man stop. Yeah, he'll, he'll do all his shit talking and be right there outside, <laughs> waiting for someone to do something. <laughs> Well, I don't think, I like I said, I don't think this internet, it, 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 you can't win. You just said it. Yeah. You can't beat the internet. You can't. The internet is undefeated. Undefeated. It, it, and, and that's the thing, man. And like, that's why I would hate just if I was ever in a position to where all the internet stuff could come out. It'll make the person the ugliest person you've ever seen. Oh, man, they start talking about you and them damn monkeys and all kind of yeah. shit. I can only, I can only imagine what they're going to say about you, the animals. <laughs> the nigga was in the animal cruelty, all oh, kind of stuff. Man. I felt oh, sorry for Trap Boy Freddy when they caught him with that damn tiger over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to Trap Boy Freddy. Free Trap Boy Freddy. Free you know what I'm saying? Freddy. Like, did you ever, did he ever come to your studio? Nah, he's never been. He in my never studio. been. Nah, he's never so been. So they, uh, who's been in your studio that that come through Dallas? Just give me a few of them. Uh, I mean, you've had everybody come through. I mean, like Rick Young Ross, Dolph, Young Dolph. You've had uh, Key Glock. You've had uh, and you you still connected Mooney with Mom. Key Glock? Uh, I mean, we ran into each other. A few I like times. that nigga, man. Go ahead. Who else? He's a good dude. Uh, NLE Chopper. You had uh, man, that's. The whole Dipset crew came through, Cameron. Uh, man, it's been a lot of people. A lot been of been a lot of them. Yeah. And, and and do you ever what which one sticks out to you? Uh I mean, some of them I really built like great relationships, like uh Eric Bellinger, you know. Okay. He's like a real good friend of mine. I've been to his studio, he's been to my studio, he's been to my house, we've hung out. We've literally traveled all around America together, and it's just like just good energy, good vibes, you know. And his family's like my family, and we all big kicked it together, you know what I'm saying? And it's rare when you meet good people like that. I always liked him too. I looked him up. He's a dope artist. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Solid so, guy. It, but I don't expect nothing else from you. You always be around the right people, man. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you pick the right crowd of people to be around. Everybody I see around, I can tell that they've been around you. Yeah, Cause I, you I go off of energy. Yeah, and, and you, you can know, tell that energy is everything. You, you can know? tell that. When, I'm when telling you. You get bad energy. It's like there's a reason why it's there. Yeah. And some people try to ignore that, but then that's the reason why they get 
what they get. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you focus on good energy and you focus on just keep reciprocating good energy and it keeps going back and forth, that energy turns into something big, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it almost becomes like a, a spiritual thing. It does. It, it definitely does. But as you ro rose in what you did and started getting more popular, mm -hmm. um, how many times did you find yourself um, surrounded by people who are yes people? Oh, that's, that's everywhere. You, you get that more than anything. You know, there's a whole lot of yes people. And the sad part about yes people is like, yes people will drain good energy from good people. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, and you'll just see it because they're not really there for the right intentions. They're there to just say yes. They're there to just do whatever you say, you know, and then they'll just keep doing that and just leading a negative perception because when they fall off, the yes people are gone. Yeah. You know, now yeah. now you're surrounded by the no people. <laughs> <laughs> they be like, uh, can I get a loan? No. No, can I not at all. No. no. <laughs> How, if you're an artist and you start, you coming out today, mm -hmm. give me your thoughts on how that artist is supposed to uh, Roll out? Yeah, get noticed. What should he do? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 16-year-old uh, kid. Mm -hmm. I want to do music. I've seen a lot of, I've seen Big X to plug. Yeah. What can I do? I want to be like that. I feel like everything is based off of influence. You know, once you get the right influence behind what you're doing, everybody's going to follow. Wow. You know, so some people influence the dance community. The dance community they're like one of the biggest co-signers you could think of. When you get some big dance groups dancing to your song, that's gonna make more people catch on. Shout out to C4S. Yep, C4S, they doing their thing. And they've learned that we don't just have to make other people big, we can make ourselves big and put yeah. out our own music. So, yeah. you know, shout out to them. Yeah. Is TikTok a must to be able to get like a hit? Um, I don't think it's a must, but I feel like it's an, a good lane. You know, and it's a lane where you can really see numbers go crazy, you know, and you can see people actually connecting to what you're doing. But I don't think it's a must because there's people that don't use TikTok mm -hmm. and they still are big. Yeah, because some people I see that have like good songs, especially if they first like bust on TikTok is like that song is just known as like a TikTok song. Mm -hmm. It's like it can't cross over into just being like a regular song. Yeah, and th th there's a lot of one-hit wonders on there. You know, people that you see make a big, like uh, she's a she's a runner, she's a track star. Mm -hmm. I've never she's heard, a runner, she's a track star. Yeah, I've never heard <laughs> nothing ever after that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, that was it, she, she ran away. <laughs> <laughs> never came back. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to happen. <laughs> you had one hit wonders before, though. That's yeah. not the first one. You know, I, shout out to Unk. Walk it out. Yeah. Walk it out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, one project that kind of comes and boom. And you know? sometimes what I've also realized is where the song is bigger than the artist. Mm -hmm. Where you know the song more than you know the artist. And when that happens, it's like people will be like, oh, yeah, I know that song. But do you know who sung that song? Mm -hmm. Do you know... Anything about that art. I don't even know what that artist looked like, but I like the song. And then that's what kind of takes that one-hit wonder to the next level because most of the people that you see one-hit wonders, do you know what they look like? But you know the song. Know the song. the song got bigger than them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be able to match your persona with the same level as the music. And if you're not I doing I seen no girl make me sweat. Yeah. I wouldn't look up. But her persona. No, no, she looked match, real good. You know, her I ain't gonna lie, she looked like she supposed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like we just interviewed, like we just we just interviewed like Deli Ranks, and he was talking about it and saying sometimes it is preferable for you to make just songs first and not come out with your first hit first. Not, don't come out with like the first song you make mm -hmm. to be like a gigantic hit. Because then after that, sometimes it can be just a one-hit wonder because it's hard to come behind a hit song when it's your first song. But that's because they're not really building themselves up because you got to like the artist for who the artist is and not the song. So a lot of times that makes you sense. learn to like the artist and then learn to like their music, they become a bigger artist because mm. it's like oh, I'm a fan of them before their music. Wow. Who would you say 
has been the most disappointing one hit wonder. <laughs> like you know, like you hear a song, you're like, "Oh my Damn. god, I love this song, you love, 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 love this song." <laughs> this is the most disappointing and, one. And, and, and you, you would love to hear more music from them, but they never came out with more music. Damn. Like, who would that person be? I would say uh, Trinidad James. That's huge. You yeah. smart. I didn't think about yeah. that. Yeah, because I feel like he came with such a big song, and that song was like everywhere. But what was that other dude name? The one that sound like Future. Yeah, Designer. Boom! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was at the studio. He, he been to the studio? Yeah. Did y'all get another out of him or no? Did get a what? No, he didn't. I was about to say, I thought you said a nut. No! <laughs> oh. Pause! 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 You know, he, another he hit was out of with him. So. <laughs> <laughs> so did y'all, did y'all, was y'all able to get anything else? A nah, hit we, out of this we, dude? We made a lot of music with him. That's hard. Yeah, but he, he's definitely a very talented artist. He sound deep. Yeah. Do he sound that deep when you were recording? Oh, yeah. Him? Oh, yeah. He, he, he's like that. You know? uh, and, uh, big X sound deep, too, but it's a different deep. But yeah, yeah, Big yeah. X big to go with it, too, so it, it kind of helps. Yeah. I, I just feel like designer, you know, a lot of things can also be more mental than anything. You know, people are battling mental things, mm -hmm. you know, and catching so much fame and getting so much notoriety and just seeing everything that you've seen. It's like you're trying to keep up with this persona that's way past you. And it's like you're not able to keep your personality up to that level. So now you're feeling awkward when you're around people, so you want to get drunk. And then when you get drunk, you do foolish things, you know what I'm saying? Because now you're showing your ass. No, that's real. But it seemed like most... Um Artists, comedians, actors, all of that, or anybody in the entertainment industry who is successful have battled with some sort of depression or mental problems. Mm -hmm. And that's what, for some reason, it seems that leads them up to their success. Yeah. Because if you don't go through all this stuff and it's like you don't have nothing to really like push out. Yeah. But it's also like, where do they get a chance to release mm -hmm. all of that? You know, because everywhere you go, people are demanding let me get a picture hey let me get an interview hey let hey 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 let's do this hey hey come take a shot with me hey 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 come out here hey i want to book you for the show hey i want you to do this hey i want you to meet my mom hey i want you to meet and all these fake people around them yeah so you're getting drained everywhere you go to where it's like where do you get to release and even when you go home you think you get to release at home but now look at what family's doing Hey man, I'm down on my rent. Hey, I can't pay this. Hey, hey, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get you back when this happens. So now family is draining everything out of you. And you're just having nowhere to release. So the only thing you could do is suppress. Or family saying you're never at home. You need to come home more. Yeah. So now you're gonna suppress all those issues right. with drugs and alcohol. Well, I can tell you right now. You know, uh, Elvis Presley did it. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, Amy House. Amy Winehouse. Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. They say Michael Jackson did it. Yeah. Say he died in 1979. One of the guys on here said, yeah. it's real theory over here. It's some real conspiracy. <laughs> like, meaning, meaning so you think maybe counseling have, should help? I feel like. They should see counselors? They should find something to go outside of their norm. That's and how they get the best music a lot like, of time. I feel like. Right? Without that. Yeah, but I feel like there's other ways. Like, uh, you know, Nipsey Hussle was working with Dr. Sebi. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Sebi obviously had something that was taking people out of their norm. You know, TLC Left Eye was working with Dr. Sebi. Right. You know, and these people were taking them away from their norm. And when you see the pressure of what they were going through and then just allowing themselves to go to a place where it was nothing but healing, you know, spiritual healing, you know, actually putting the good stuff in your body and producing out the good stuff, that's when you see they start to get better. They start to do stuff in their community, they start to express. That's real. They start expressing real things, you know what I'm saying? Instead of suppressing it, now they're expressing it, and they're actually helping. And me, I've been going on my spiritual journey. I like that for a T-shirt. Instead of <sighs> that's crazy, man. Instead of um, hold on, hold on, I'm trying to get it. <laughs> I got it. It just slipped out my. Instead of suppressing it, 
express it. Exactly. Like, I, need wow. exactly. I think you, like I said, I think you figured it out, but you look how much you went through to get to that. You've been to yeah. the military. You've been yeah. all, you know, you, you had all kind of stuff going on as a youngster. You talked yeah. about last time you was on the show. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you didn't just become radio. Just saying, it sound no. good now, buddy. No. But you've been through some stuff to get to be who you are today. Yeah, I'm definitely a, a street <laughs> activist. You know, I'm definitely was I just, very active. I, like I said, I just I love the fact that, like I said again, the people that you have around you, the way that your energy is, the way mm -hmm. that you move, it helps people. Absolutely. And I just want that to continue. That's my biggest thing. And, you know, and I want to you know shout out to my team. You know, like I said, yeah. my team. Helps me keep myself grounded, helps me keep focused, helps keep everything in line, you know what I'm saying? And they're the ones that's really keeping never satisfied alive, you know wow. what I'm saying? Because never satisfied to me was always just part of my lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. it was never really my business. It was mm -hmm. just my lifestyle. Everything about my life was never satisfied, you know what I'm saying? But then when it became a business, it was more like I wanted to help people to learn that lifestyle, but learn that in the business form, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I learned it in the street form mm -hmm. to where when I was in the streets, I wasn't satisfied. Mm. I was like, oh, we only made a couple thousand a day. All right, we got to do better than this. We need to go harder tomorrow. I need yeah. 10,000 tomorrow. I yeah. need 100,000. Come you know, on man? now. Let me, let me get numbers Preach. I've never seen before. That's right. And that's what I wanted to express in the business world. So me building Never Satisfied in the business world was more like teaching other people to be not satisfied for where they are and not being content with just working for a nine to five, but actually like learning how to create their business and be entrepreneurs. That's real. So are you satisfied now? <laughs> <laughs> never satisfied. Never satisfied. But, never satisfied. But always grateful. And he's content. Okay. He's very content. Okay. No, I'm far from being content. <laughs> Content shouldn't even be in your vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, so you're not content. No. So are you Very humble? Very humble. But so not content. But not content. Explain that. Yes. Because when you're content, that's almost like you're settling. Like you're settling for where you are. You're content. I don't know about that. I think content can be you okay with where you are and you're still striving, but you're not going to just trip out because you're in this position. I mean... You, you don't want to trip out, period. I know that, but, but I'm just saying. How are you, how are I think you still that's more striving? Humble. I think that's more humble. When yeah. I think about content, I think about what he was saying where I'm good where I'm at. I'm comfortable. I I don't really want to go nowhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like, content, like I said, uh, content, content is a word. Content is where you create lazy. Mm -hmm. Content is where you don't want to get off the couch. Are you content with sitting at home every day? You, you can be content as a billionaire, too, and making yeah. crazy money. But... That's just him as a billionaire, but does he want to be a trillionaire? <laughs> content don't have to be lazy. It could be, it could be you so reach to your pinnacle. If he's content with being a billionaire, he's never going to be a trillionaire. But if he's not content with being a billionaire, he becomes a trillionaire, and then he just keeps going. Maybe he doesn't want to be a... Because sometimes when people, you work so, so hard, you work so hard... So is he lazy at that point? Hold on, no, no. You're satisfied. No, you're satisfied, <laughs> right. You've gotten to a point yeah. where you're like, you know what, I've worked all these years, I just want to concentrate on the family, I just want to just relax and enjoy the rest of my life. Yeah. Then he's content. So that's satisfied. And he's satisfied, right. But, but you're not lazy. Satisfied. But, but not satisfied. lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you chasing? When you're never satisfied, what are you chasing? What is your end goal? Is there ever an angle for never satisfied? Well, I've been learning this lately, you know, and I honestly feel like maybe I've been chasing the wrong thing. Okay. And I've never really expressed this. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Because I was chasing money mm -hmm. and it was always about, okay, how can I get to my next meal? How can I get to another meal? How can I get to this meal? You know what I'm saying? But I've learned if I'm chasing balance and being balanced there's no way that balance can ever be content there's wow. no way balance can ever be the same because you got to constantly keep putting things on each side to stay balanced so you got to take the good with the bad you got to take all the losses with the wins you know what i'm saying you got to just keep rebalancing and where you find peace is in the middle wow that's so, right when you want that peace of mind, you can't get it if it's all positive because you're worrying about how to either get more or worrying about who's going to take it from you. And you can't get it when you're at the bottom because then you're worrying about 
oh, well, you can't do nothing at the bottom or you weren't about trying to get to the top. But when you create a balance, no matter where you are in life, then it's like now you're coasting through life. Now you're enjoying the flow of life. You're enjoying everything that's coming into life and you're just trying to remain balanced. Wow, man, y'all heard radio, man. He ain't playing no game. <laughs> Balance you niggas out. Yeah. Ball exactly. Talk 101. And, and yeah. look at your marriage. Like, this is a great balance. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah. if you didn't have this balance, where would you be? Man, I'd be, I'd be not balanced, hell. I'd be uneven. <laughs> uh, I would be, uh, I slid off and hit a pothole by now. But <laughs> the biggest thing about y'all's balance is that y'all are not content. Because y'all could have just said, hey, we're just going to create this family, have these kids, and we're just going to retire and go be on the beach somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But instead, y'all said, let's keep striving for something bigger, and let's keep going for something that's more that we can actually create that leaves legacies. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Boy, you show sure talking. That nigga a preacher. I know this nigga a preacher. <laughs> that nigga got a Bible somewhere in his back pocket, one of them little Geneva Bibles. He got one. I know he got one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Nah, man it's, I'm just it's the, kidding, it's man. The life Bible. No, nah, I get a lot, it, man. A lot of life in There's here. A lot of life, man. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I really wanted to get you back on here because I knew, you know, we, this ain't our last interview. We oh, always going to do this, absolutely. man. Absolutely. Just to try to, you know, this is the thing I want for this show. There are some dope people here in Dallas, man. Yeah. And the dope people that God put me in, in, in line with, I know people need to hear their stories. You an entrepreneur, man. Mm -hmm. Have a business over there, multimillionaire. You just one of those guys. And at the end of the day, a lot of times people, you know, they try to ignore what's really going down. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the right people need to hear it. The people who want to change. Absolutely. People who want to grow. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, man, for figuring it out, man. And your team, man. Sure. Dope team. Professional. They ain't been loud like you other niggas that come over here. <laughs> These niggas is quiet. These good niggas right here. Gotta and you also got brought a, a, I think that guy right there from the Philippines. He I don't is. know. He you is. know what I'm saying? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is what I'm talking about. You got some good energy in here tonight on Boston. I had to get you over here. I prayed about right. it. I said, I got to get my boy back over here. And I ain't gonna lie. You've been consistent. You know what Man, I'm saying? Man, have you been watching Boston? I've been seeing y'all. Y'all been moving. You know what I'm saying? Y'all definitely been oh, moving. Oh, no. Don't you peek around now. Then he got, uh -oh. he got a little guy here that trying uh -oh. to I don't know. Ahead. I Come know on. this guy right here. Come this through. guy, you know what, man? Let me tell you something. Every time I what linked y'all together, man. Go ahead, tell him. Come on the mic. The microphone. The mic. That right, mic right, right there is gonna get get you. Get on the mic. Let me let All me right. get this lie together. Hold on. You better get on the line. You, you ever <laughs> seen Austin Powers? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my mini me. Let's go. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's talk about this, man. Uh, man, I met radio in the hood, man. Like. At night times, I used to get out of clubs and fucked up, and Ray would come through the parking lot and to be the last person in the parking lot. I'd be like, hey, Ray, hey, you know, I need a ride home, man. You know, you know where I stay at. Mm -hmm. Every time, he never failed me, man. He always took me home, and after that, he was like, man, you need to come by the studio. We need to talk. We need to chat it up. We need to get something going with you, man. And Say, you that nigga that was selling me all that high look over there, nigga. Yeah. I remember you. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. I could, yeah, that nigga, the bottle was extremely high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got extremely rich. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed every minute of it, man. You might have seen him on the shade room, world you, star. What man. you was doing on the shade? What man. you doing, man? Man, I be passed out drunk, but not no more. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm telling you, every weekend I got a video of this guy. Really cutting yeah, up, cutting, cutting up. up, and cutting he was either up. in front of a taco truck, passed out. He was either in a garage with a cone on his head. That's epic <laughs> content, yeah, bro. No, he had everything. I had everything. He I had mean, everything. Everything that. you can think of. He had it. But my goal was to get him away from, away from all that because I didn't mm -hmm. want him to end his life like, like that. that. You know what I'm saying? Because I've lost a lot of people. Yeah, you know? I know. And, and then. How important has radio been, you know? Radio's well, been a very good person, like a very important person in my life, like mentor-wise, like wow. being the, the head CEO of a very good production. I've seen people go, seen people come, and I've been rocking with radio for about eight years now. And yeah. Then, we never had a fallout, nothing like that. I learned, I stopped drinking liquor because you of You stopped? Radio. Yeah, I haven't drunk like in three or four years now. Come on, That's man. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, man. Yeah. 
That's what I'm talking about, baby. I already know. You know, I now let me go and throw mine in there. You know, I stopped in 1995, 94. There you go. There you go. Yeah, man. Come on, clap, niggas. What the hell, y'all? Stop clapping for. Nah, I just want to say, man, it's it's a it's a dope thing to see. Like I say, I know that. Yeah. I understand what's going on around you. Everybody say free money Moses because my boy Money Moses on that picture right there is locked up right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, uh, I, was, uh, I, I, I was with Money Moses when uh, when he was with YG and Money Moses. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's, he's a, a hell great of a guy. Father. Mm. He's a hell of a father. Hell of a father. And yes, a great he guy. is. That's my guy, man. Hey, free we got a free Money Moses. Moses. One more time. Hey, Moses. listen. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. Shout free out, money. man. We still we gonna be here for you yeah, when yeah. you come back. He yeah. had you just had a little hiccup. You know some things. Things happened before. We was trying to get him straight. Yeah. He still had to go through a transition like you going through. Yeah. And you know, that it takes time, man. That's yeah. what we're here for. Yeah. That's what God put us in these positions for, bro. Yeah. So that's why I know that's why I'm here. So, man, I just appreciate you, man, for coming on the show, man. Appreciate and I appreciate y'all, man, for even coming and blessing the platform, bro. Yeah. It, 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 and, and, and listen, man, I take, I listen. I take pride in the people that I bring on this show. No, for sure. and, and that's why you're here, bro. And you I want you to keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing is not just focus on the hype. You're actually focused on the real, the truth, not just the gossip, not just the negativity. You got to have a good blend of balance. everything. Yeah. And, and the balance that you bring and just the things that you're doing, I mean, it, it, it's inspiring for me because... Wow. Normally, like, I wouldn't even be on the show. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 been, I was I'm trying to go live one day. And I, I, was, I was talking. I, I asked Money Moses. I said, hey, man, how, how, how do people get on Boss Talk? And then, you know, he gave me the run around. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, I'm not going to lie, like, three weeks ago, I was talking to the radio. I said, radio, how do people get on this, this Boss Talk? Like, yeah. I don't know that, man. i never seen it in my life, I don't think. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. I, he was like, bro, you got to have some type of content or something like that. I said, yeah. Yeah. content. <laughs> You on Boss Talk now? You on Boss Talk? Come on! <laughs> hey. hey, I fuck with it though. Man. Thank you so he much. Represent. You know, he got Wings World. Oh, he ain't playing. He's killing it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The one thing I can say, I man. I can ask a question though. How long have you, um, how hard was it to get sober for you? Man, it was very hard at first. Like, at first it took me to, like, I tell people I was I would not drink. I was telling Ray I was not drinking, but then I come Smack to the studio ass, and I'll be fucked up and I'll be but on his like ass. the last straw is when you get in uh, some trouble or something like that. You get an argument with one of your family members. You was like, yeah, that gotta go. Like that's the one thing that's hurting you from everything else, and it really did hurt me from a lot of stuff. But you know now that I'm not doing it, I I'm, I feel a lot better. I live my life like there's no tomorrow. And my mom got to see you sober. And then my mom got to see me sober before she passed away. Wow, wow. man. She, she passed away a, a day before my birthday, two years ago. Wow. wow. So when that happened, I knew, I was like, hey, yeah, you know, God's ready for me to to, to, to wake up, man. Do the right to, thing. Yeah, do the right thing. Like, I'm out here for a reason, not for a season. Man. You yeah, didn't have to go to no alcohol Come on, or none of that stuff. No, no, no. He's great in he, he stayed in radio school. <laughs> yeah, right here, right. So if you can do it, a lot of people can do it too. Because a lot of people can. be battling with that sort of stuff. Man, yeah, listen, yeah. I know. Anybody, huh? Like huh? The, the only the hardest thing about this is like you will lose a lot of friends. You, you definitely will, lose you a lot. Will of a lot like people won't want to hang out with yeah, you. Yeah, no because more they're still drinking. Because they want you to be the old you. They don't want to be this new you that you were mm -hmm. paying attention to everything. That you be the DD. That you are gonna make sure everybody gets home safe and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. People want you to be the one that's yo. Oh, I like you said on the cone on my head or me just passed they want out. You to anywhere. be the Joker. They want yeah, you. Yeah. They, 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 it's like you get more fame to be a bad person than be a good person. Mm -hmm. Like people want to post a bad you, but they don't want to post a good you. Good you. Like mm -hmm. the good you, the good me right now is that I own a jet ski business. I, Come on now. They got four jet skis in a boat that Come on me now. and Ray was partnering up with because my. Mm -hmm. My old partner passed away right the month before my mom passed wow, away. Man, wow, man, you've been going so, through it. So I, I went through, I went, when how God says stuff happens in threes, stuff happened to me in three, and that's why I knew God is real. Like, everything yeah, is real. He real, ain't he? He's real, real. So man, he real I to me. every day, and I'm me on that too. road every day. I, I just got back from New Orleans, mm -hmm. Lubbock, Amarillo. Be on it. He's doing Fort shows. Worth, He's Houston. doing shows. Yeah, uh, yeah I, get, I got an uh, agent in L.A., so I get booked for all these private parties and stuff like that. Wow, mm -hmm. man. Uh, that's that's what I'm, dope. I, I'm telling you, man, I, it don't it don't yeah, surprise me. You got me. a car. He, what kind of car? A <laughs> You be rolling. Yeah. yeah. Paid off everything. Well, you'll yeah. jump in that hole and burn out. What? 
Yeah, you better not be speeding, I, I, nigga. I, I, I be him where we ever <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think that's dope, man. Like I said, it, it doesn't surprise me because this radio, is he gonna, he gonna make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I'm pretty sure each one of these guys got stories that they could tell oh, yeah. on how, you know. You got Miss Nene, you got Spoon, you got Edge, you got yeah. Vance back there. Yeah, I, I, like I said, this, that's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> the team gotta be right. And you've mm-hmm. seen me for years taking oh, teams yeah. of people to Vegas. Yep. Taking teams, you seen the guy that the, 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 you he, seen the little, the little short guy. You know he did that six nine uh, uh, and uh, Kodak Black uh, video. Okay. The same one was with me that was yeah, recording yeah, me. Yeah. He did that video. I now he's in that. Japan. Damn. Uh, he was working for Lamborghini and and he worked for a watch company. The name Jay Tyler. Okay. Look him up. He yeah. he cold. Yeah. And he was with me that day when yeah. he recorded us. And you still in contact? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he in Japan. Come. He said he ain't never coming back. Oh, I talked to him about a month ago. He don't want to come back. <laughs> he said he ain't never coming I back. I might do the same thing. I got a Japanese passport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much done with America. You but, know what but, America done got the last of me. But that, that's the thing. Like we, <laughs> when you done had a business for eight, eight, like like 15 years, 18 years, these mm-hmm. stories are there. There, it's people I don't even tell stories about that we've put money into projects, helping people. We've yeah. done that our whole time, bro. Yeah, yeah. And, and you've seen it a lot of times because we would always take different people with us and try yeah. to show them the game and entrepreneurship. Now, now I got a question for y'all. What didn't burn y'all out? Because I feel... What was it? Uh, that God, we pray a lot together, man. Mm. We pray a lot together. We 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 talk about God. We we read we read together. Uh, we do get frustrated at times, but yeah. there's something inside of us that want to help everybody. So when they say... Family that pray, pray together, together stay. Together. That's real, right? Yeah. What yeah. you say? Yeah, and I say just waking up every day, no matter what you're doing in life, waking up every day, telling yourself, "Okay, I want to do this." You have to like almost hypnotize yourself, like mm. even in relationships. I'm trying to do this. I'm going to do this different. I'm going to do this. You wanna know what I mean? Want to be a better husband. Want to be yeah. a better wife. Want to be a better husband. Yeah. I'm going to make an effort today to do this. Yeah. Because people just wake up and just go back to their regular routine. You have to wake up with intention. It is. Very mental. You know, you're, right. you're struggling with your mental every day. Well, I tell my son stuff. I'll be like, man, I'm going to get these roses today. I try to get roses at least once a week. That, see, go. people don't realize how much it's a lot go into or, or try to figure out ways to keep things going. I might not get rose. And she said, well, well, what you got there? You never know. Yeah. You know, you got to do things to try to keep uh, things aligned mm. properly when it comes down to communicating, because I don't talk a lot. Yeah. So uh, when it comes down to me and her, sometimes we talk, but we don't talk about the right thing. That's yeah. a lot of it. So you got to practice a lot of different things to try to keep things going, you know? And not even just that. Men and women are so different. Different. Yeah. When Different I say level. that, meaning like, and I, I realize a lot of, a lot of couples Don't have the same problem. Don't try to scoop problem. back in front of the camera, nigga. Get on back over here. You trying to scoop back, but you scared, nigga. You trying to pull up, nigga. Yeah. They're the same way, meaning like, when women are talking to men, mm-hmm. because we're very explanatory, we tend to talk for, for a very long time when yeah. men are like, okay, okay. We don't, you we know? have short answers. Yes, short men are very, we want details. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and we'll be like, Okay, whatever you want to do, <laughs> yeah. we're done with it. But women, women don't like that because women are like, like women are like you trying to cut me off. Sit yeah, down and yeah, listen to what yeah, I'm trying to I'm tell not, you, yeah. and act like you're interested in what and I'm act saying. Like it. Act like it, even so if you're not interested. Like how you said, act, act like, like, like it. Because yeah. like yeah. if you don't act, you <laughs> exactly. Don't act like it. Like because it. not everything that men say we are interested in, but we gonna act like. Yeah. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, sometimes. But anyway, check it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank nah, you for coming on the man. show, people, man. I appreciate that information. Man, hey, how can people get a hold to you if they're trying to link? Uh, man, you can hit us up on Never Satisfied Life on Instagram. You can see us on Never Satisfied Life on YouTube. You can see us at the Dojo. You can see us at Radio's World. You can see us at... Big, Big Donnie. Donnie. Not, not Lil Donnie. Not Lil Donnie. Big Donnie. Big Donnie, Big Donnie, Donnie you know number two, man. You got exquisite. You got you got a little bit of everything here, man. You know what I'm saying? You got everybody here. So man. Check us out. Check it, man. Hey, man, make sure you guys get in the comments, man. Get in the... Hey, this next clip, though. Check it out, man. Radio. Oh. This next radio clip about to go crazy, so make sure y'all Come check on. this next clip out, man. It's been and another... I got gems for days, so whenever you need me, just hit me. Come on, now. Come it's on. been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And if you like...